Hello there, welcome again to this business class brought to you courtesy O3 Schools Jam app. I have been saying it, we shall continue to say it. O3 Schools Jam app is truly great. Um, all you have to do is activate your app to gain access to the wide variety of features which are available to help you as you study for your jam. Um, the activation fee costs 2500 Naira. And while some of you may have had bad experiences trying to pay for this before, please never doubt us. Simply pay, activate your app, and you shall be the one to come later on and give your testimonies as to how this has helped you. Um, now, without further ado, let's dive into today's class. We shall be looking at velocity time graph. Velocity time graph. Now, yes, this is a subset of motion. Um, once you've learned your normal equations of motion and the others, you also realize that yes, there's now a way in which you can represent motion on a graph. Now, here's how this works. There are different ways motion can occur. There's uniform, there's non-uniform. Now, um, we are not dealing with non-uniform here per se. Instead, we are dealing with uniform, non-uniform, if that makes any sense. Now, the ideal uniform velocity could be going Increasing your velocity, keeping it constant, reducing your velocity. While normally non uniform simply means going without any fixed pattern. However, in this case, we are looking at one where this person is making uniform motion but not keeping to one. So he could increase his velocity, then decrease them uniformly, then increase it uniformly again, then perhaps maintain it uniformly. So that's it. There's uniformity to it as well, unlike this squiggle where nothing truly follows any predicted pattern. So, velocity time graph can help you analyze this type where this person is, um, if we may say, changing his mind in how he is moving, or this object is changing the speed uniformly. Therefore, velocity time graph. Now, in velocity time graph, velocity is on the vertical end. Why the time is on the horizontal end of the graph. Um, there's also a displacement time graph, though. This isn't much used, but we should just note that it exists a displacement time graph. And um, for displacement time graph, please note that the slope of this graph, the slope, which is changing s over changing t, actually gives you the velocity of this object so for a displacement time graph the slope actually gives you your velocity but that's for that we are trying focusing in this class on your velocity time graph now velocity time graph while moving in different manner is always made up of three different types of lines either a line sloping upwards a line sloping downwards or a line moving horizontally, no slope. There are the three types. Now, if the line is sloping upwards, that's acceleration, sloping downwards, that's retardation, and moving perfectly horizontally, that is uniform velocity or constant velocity. So, let's see. For this one sloping upwards, we have acceleration. And obviously, that will be changing V over changing T, the slope of the graph. Now, um, if I was to take my point from here and here, then here and here, this will be V1. Sorry, this will be T1 because this is my time, T1 and T2. And this is V1 and V2 because this is velocity. The fascination will be V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. Now, for retardation, it is pretty much the same thing. This guy goes, and this one does the same thing. So, here can be my T1, T2, it can be my V1, and V2. Now, please note, retardation, however, is going to be minus change V over change T, which will become minus into V2 minus V1, over t2 minus t1 um hold up sorry please this first one is always your one so here must be v1 
and these two they go together so you have with t2 yeah so this is your correct diagram top here is v1 here is v2 that's the difference between acceleration and retardation then for one moving at constant velocity you can't find the slope your v is pretty much constant velocity is unchanging now whenever you have any of these graphs looking in any manner you can also find distance by simply finding the area under the graph like in this case this is a triangle this is a triangle or this is a rectangle so simply by finding the area under these graphs you can find distance is area under the graph and funny enough this is all you need to know to get a major handle on velocity time graph and how to manipulate them in your solvents it's truly that easy um some of the graphs may look a bit funny imagine the graph looking like this all you have to do is simply break it down one you could solve like a trapezium to find your distance but if you can't do that you can break down break down in terms of what you know though so you may know the time here the time here so triangle rectangle and triangle so if you sum these three areas you shall try to be able to obtain the total area under that graph which will then give you your total distance so you see the system graph is pretty easy and so without further ado let's sink our teeth into some questions which you shall be able to assess again using our o3 schools jamb app so let's see open our jamb app we have our first question for the day this one comes from the year 2018 and i think this is yes model 2 question number 37 we have a graph which you shall see on your screen or on your app and um we have been told from this graph to determine the total distance covered i have just pointed out total distance covered is right the area of shape formed by the graph now we have a trapezium right here let's try solving both methods for now let's start with area of a trapezium area of trapezium as you should know again this is why you need to know mathematics 1 over 2 a plus b h a and b represent the parallel sides so this is a trapezium here is a here is b then this vertical height is h so that will be one over two um a first of all is lying between 10 and 25 in this particular diagram meaning that a must be 15 then b goes from zero all the way to 30 therefore b must be 30 then the height is the velocity maximum one which is 20 so that'll be 1 over 2 times 45 times 20. Into 20 is 10, 10 times 45, 450 meters. You see, pretty easy, pretty easy. Question 2. The slope of a straight line velocity time graph represents, we said this already, it represents acceleration. So that's option A. Very, very easy. That was from 2018, model 2. Question 28. Um, so moving on, we get to 2017 now, more than two question 10. When a graph of displacement is plotted against time, the slope of the graph is now A is speed, B is velocity, C is acceleration, D is retardation. All you have to remember is that this is no longer a velocity time graph. This is a displacement time graph. Therefore, the slope cannot be acceleration or retardation. Now, um, the common mistake here is now like I spin the velocity not the same thing. Well, quantitatively, yes, but um, qualitatively, no. Speed is scalar, velocity is a vector. And that's right way speed is scalar must therefore go with distance, the scalar, while velocity is a vector will go with displacement, the vector. So since the graph is a graph of displacement against time, then the slope must be velocity not speed so our answer is b okay so you have to see just think a bit um and then we have on that diagram um 
this one just want to draw it so that i can explain something like this now we have been asked from this graph which of the following quantities cannot be determined a deceleration but deceleration is something as retardation you are going down i have a down going component so of course you can get deceleration so that's my answer b initial velocity again i get initial velocity it is not zero why is no way it is so i know the value it is 60. so of course i can get it i know where i'm starting from total distance traveled also perfectly easy to solve find the area of this trapezium however initial acceleration can't be solved because for acceleration i must have an upward slope which doesn't happen to exist within the bounds of this question so you see my answer must now be d very very easy tiny bit of reasoning then we'll go to 2010 question three and again we have yet another diagram that we have been asked to analyze um this one looks something like this then it goes and then this is horizontal don't mind my drain and then it comes straight down this is o e f g and h okay then the question is the statement that is true about the motion of this car is which of these is going to be true about this car a says it decelerates between points f and h this is f this is h as you can see it does two different things uniform velocity then deceleration so no we can't just say decelerates between f and h no it is decelerating between g and h not f to h so a is wrong it accelerates this is now option b it accelerates between f and g this is a straight line a straight horizontal line and we know in this case my velocity must be constant uniform so no the acceleration does not exist there then c it has constant speed between points e and f e f velocity is going upwards that has no constant speed that has uniform acceleration so i know c also cannot be answer which means it must be d let's inspect d it has no acceleration between f and g perfectly correct between year and year the speed was not changing because it had no acceleration the acceleration was zero you see just tiny 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 bits of logic is all you require and you shall be able to answer questions on this topic um taking another example this one from the year 2009 question four yes 2009 question four what is the acceleration between two points on a velocity time graph which has coordinates 10 seconds 15 meters per second and 20 seconds 35 meters per second um now in this case the examiner has done us the favor actually of interpolating or extrapolating rather these values from the graph so that i know this is one time velocity second time second velocity and we know that acceleration is changing v over changing c indicating that this must be v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1 then v2 becomes 35 v1 is 15 t2 is 20 and t1 is 10 35 minus 15 is 20 over 10 giving you 2 meters per squared seconds and on our outer schools jump up that is option d and we know that must be our answer and now to round up the time graph again it's a very very simple short and precise we shall have to answer one last question this one being from the year 1999 yes 1999 and the question number is number 39 again we have a diagram where i've been told to find the acceleration and retardation so looking at this diagram from your three schools jump up um we know that the velocity the peak velocity let's start with acceleration it is going from zero to 80 meters per second while the time is going from zero to 20 seconds therefore knowing that a is v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1 my v2 is 80 my v1 is zero 
T2 is 20, T1 is 0. That will be 80 over 20, which is 4 meters per square seconds. So now, obviously, without even finishing my solving, I know my options are between B and C. It can no longer be A or D, because I know 4 must come first. Now then, let's get the retardation. The retardation is going from just like this now, but it's starting from that place where it slopes down, not the horizontal side, one going down. It starts going from 80 and ends up at 0, while the time goes from 50 and ends up at 80 seconds. Therefore, retardation is minus V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. Okay? So, what is V2? V2 is your second velocity. We yeah. 0 minus 80 all over T2, which is um, 80 minus 50. I hope you are getting this. Um, 0 minus 80 is minus 80. So minus minus 80 all over 80 minus 50 is 30. Okay, I'm sorry. I think that is 90. I'm trying to take a good look at this. And yes, that is 90. It's going from 50 to 90. Those 50 to 80. So at times during your exam, you have to make sure that's why I squint and see these diagrams as clear as can be. 90 minus 50 is 40. Therefore, minus times minus is going to be plus 80. 40 over 40, obviously. And that will give us 2. So my acceleration is for meter per square seconds. Retardation to so meter per square seconds. Implying that my answer is option C. You see? Quite easy, quite easy. And um, with that, we've come to an end of this class on velocity time graph. Very, very simple topic. Um, I will try to learn how to solve this. Remember, our class was brought to you by O3 Schools. Please get your damn app, activate, and get access to all the features. Um, remember also to subscribe to this channel for more videos and tutorials on all your different subjects and topics that will help you as you prepare for your job. Thank you very much. My name is Axanatius.